Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering machine learning everywhere. Build your ladder to AI. Brought to you by IBM. Well, welcome back here to New York City as we continue at uh, IBM's Machine Learning Everywhere, Build Your Ladder to AI, along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls, and it is now a great honor of ours to have, uh, I think probably inarguably, the greatest chess player of all time, Gary Kasparov, now joins us. He's uh, currently the chairman of the Human Rights Foundation, uh, political activist in Russia as well, um, uh, some time ago, but thank you for joining us. We really appreciate the Thanks time, sir. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, but we've been looking forward to this. Um, Let's, let's just, if you would, set the, the stage for us. So artificial intelligence, obviously, uh, quite a hot topic. Um, the, maybe not conflict, the complementary nature of human intelligence. There are people on both sides of the camp, but, but you see them as being very complementary to one another. You know, I think that's a natural development uh, in this industry that will bring together humans and machines because this collaboration will, will produce the best results. This, uh, our abilities are complementary. So uh, the humans will bring um, creativity, intuition, uh, uh, and other typical human qualities, like uh, human judgment and strategic vision, while machines will add uh, calculation, memory, and many other abilities that they've, they've been acquiring lately. So there's room for both, right? It is, I think it's inevitable, uh, because no machine will ever reach 100% perfection. Uh, so machines will be coming closer and closer, 90%, 92, 94, 95, but there's still room for humans because at the end of the day, you, even with this massive power, you have to guide it. You just have to evaluate the results. And at the end of the day, it, it's, machine will never understand when uh, 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 it reaches the territory of diminishing returns. So it's very important for humans actually to uh, identify, so what is the task? It, I think it's a mistake that is made um, uh, by, by many pundits, that they just try, they automatically transfer the uh, machine expertise from the closed systems into the open-ended systems. Mm -hmm. Because in every closed system, whether it's a, the game of chess, the game of Go, uh, video games like Dota, or anything else where humans already define the parameters of, of, of the problem, machines will perform phenomenally. But if it's an open-ended system, then a uh, machine will never identify just what is the sort of the, the right question to be asked. Uh, don't hate me for this question, but that, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been reported, and I don't know if it's true or not, but that at one point you said you would never lose to a machine. My question is, um, how capable can we make machines? First of all, is that true? Did you maybe underestimate the power of computers? And how capable do you think we can actually make machines? Look, in the 80s, when the question was asked, I was much more optimistic because uh, we saw very, you know, very little at that time uh, from machines uh, that could make me, the world champion at the time, uh, worry about machines' capability of, uh, of defeating me in, 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 in the real chess game. Um, okay, I, I underestimated the, the pace of this development. I could see something was happening, was, was cooking, but I thought it would take longer. Uh, for, for machines to, to catch up. Um, but uh, as I said in, in my talk here is that it's the, we should simply recognize the fact that everything we do while knowing how we do that, machines will do better. Any particular task that, 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 that human perform, machine will eventually surpass us. So what I love about your story, I was telling you off camera about when we had Eric Benioffson and Andrew McAfee on, is you're the opposite of Samuel P. Langley to me. You know who Samuel P. Langley no, is? Please. Yeah. Samuel P. Langley, do you know who Samuel P. Langley no. is? He was the gentleman that, you guys will love this, that uh, the government paid, I think it was $50,000 at the time, to create a flying machine. Mm -hmm. But the Wright brothers beat him to it. So what did Samuel P. Langley do after the Wright brothers succeeded? He quit. But after you lost to the machine, you said, you know what, I can beat the machine with other humans, and created what is now the best chess player in the world, is my understanding, it's not a machine, but it's a combination of machines and, hum and humans. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it, it, in chess, actually, we could demonstrate uh, how the collaboration can work. And now in many areas, people rely on, on the lessons that, that have been revealed, uh, um, learned from, from, from uh, this, what I call advanced chess. That in this, in, in this team, human plus machine, 
uh, the most important um, element of success is not the strengths of the uh, human expert, is not the speed of the machine, but it's a process. Uh, it's an interface. So how you actually make them work together. And, uh, and in, the, in the future, I think that's, that, that will be the key of success because we have very powerful machines, those AIs, uh, intelligent algorithms, and all of them will require very special treatment. That's why also I use this uh, uh, analogy with uh, uh, the right fuel for Ferrari. It's, we will have um, experts, uh, operators, I even call them the shepherds, that will have to know exactly what, is, what are the requirements of this machine or, the, or that machine or that uh, group of algorithms to guarantee that we'll be able, by our human input, to compensate for their deficiencies. No, not other way around. Mm. What led you to that response? Was it your competitiveness? Was it your vision of machines and humans working together? Oh, look, I, I, uh, I thought I could last longer as the undefeated world champion. Pretty so long in 1990, time. <laughs> no, it's a, ironically, 1997, it's when you just look at the game, at the quality of the game, so, and, and, and try to uh, evaluate the deep blue real strengths. I think I was objectively, I was stronger, because today you can analyze these games with much more powerful computers. I mean, this is the, any, any uh, uh, chess app on your laptop is, is, is yeah. many, it's, 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 I mean, you cannot even compare with, with, deep, with, with deep Blue. It's just, yeah, that's, that's natural progress. Right. Uh, now, but it's, as I said, it's not about solving the game. It's not about objective strengths. It's about your ability to actually perform at, at the board. And I just realized that while we could compete uh, 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 with machines for a few more years, and that's, it did take place. I played two more matches uh, in 2003 with uh, Israel and German program, not as publicized as IBM match. Both ended as a tie, uh, uh, and I think they were probably stronger than the blue, but I knew it would be just, it would be over, maybe a decade. But, so how can we make chess relevant? Mm. And it was, for me, it was very natural. So I could see this immense power of cal calculations, brute force, mm -hmm. and on the other side, so I could see us, you know, just uh, uh, having qualities that machines uh, uh, will never acquire. So how about bringing it together and just uh, using chess as, the, um, as a laboratory uh, to find so the most productive ways for human-machine collaboration? Yeah, what was the difference in, in um, I guess, processing power, basically, or, or processing capabilities? Uh, you played the match. This is 1997, Deep Blue. Mm. You played the match on, on standard time controls. Yes. Um, so which allow you or a player a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. How much time did Deep Blue, did the machine take, or did it take its full time to con make considerations as opposed to what you uh, exercise? Um, look, it's the, it's, when you say standard time control, I think you should, uh, you should explain to the audience that is, the, it's, uh, at that time it was seven hours game. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, um, we have other, it's, what, so what we call classical chess. Mm -hmm. We have rapid chess that is under one hour, and then you have blitz chess, which is five to 10 minutes. So um, uh, that was a normal time control. It's worth person mentioning that other computers, they were, uh, they were beating human players, myself included, in blitz chess, in a very fast form mm -hmm. of chess. Yeah. So um, we still thought that you know, more time was more time. We, mm -hmm. we, we could have sort of a more comfort, a bigger comfort zone just to, to contemplate so the machine's plan and actually to create real problems that machine would not be able to solve. Um, again, more time helps humans, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still about you, your ability not to crack under pressure. Hmm. Because there's so many things that are just, you know, that could uh, uh, take you off, uh, uh, off your, um, of your balance, mm -hmm. and machine doesn't care about it. So it's, uh, at the end of the day, machine has a steady hand, and mm -hmm. steady hand wins. Because emotion doesn't no, come play it's, or, or it's, it's not about It's not about absolute strength, but it's about guaranteeing that it will play at a certain level uh, uh, for, for, for the entire game, while human game, maybe at one point it could go a bit higher, but at the end of the day, when you look at the average, it's still lower. I played many world championship matches, and, and I analyzed these games, and the games played at the highest level. And I can tell you that um, uh, even the best games played by humans at the highest level, they include not necessarily big mistakes, but inaccuracies that are irrelevant when humans facing humans, because I make a mistake, tiny mistake, then I can expect you to return the favor. Against the machine, it's just that's, that's it. So it's the uh, humans cannot play at the same level throughout the whole game. It's, 
it's the, the, the concentration, uh, the vigilance, and now required when, we, when mm. humans face humans. So there's a psychologically, if you have a strong machine, machine is good enough to play with a steady hand, the game is over. I want to point out, too, just to, so we get the record straight for, for people who might not be intimately familiar with your record. I mean, you were ranked number one in the world from 1986 to 2005 actually, for all but three yes. months. Yeah, yeah. 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 Three months. Yes. That's three decades. No, two decades. Uh, well, two decades. 80s, 90s, and odds. Okay, yes, I'll okay, give you yeah, that. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was, yeah, it's the... It's I mean, the, that is... That, that's unheard of. That's no, but phenomenal. It's the, it's the, it's the, then, uh, just going back to, you, to your previous question about you know, why I just look for a so, uh, mm. for, for new form of chess. It's, uh, this is one of the key lessons that I learned from my childhood, thanks to my mother, uh, uh, who um, spent her life you know, just uh, helping me to become who, who, I, uh, who I, I am, who I was, uh, after my father died when I was seven. Uh, it's, the, it's a lesson that's about... It's about um, always trying to make the difference. It's not just about winning, it's about making the difference. And, uh, and it led me to just to, to, uh, to kind of a new motto of my professional life. That is, it's, it's all about my own quality of, 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 of the game. So as long as I'm challenging my own excellence, I will never be short of the opponents. And uh, for me, this, is, this defeat was just, you know, just another, it's, it was just a kick, a push. So, Let's come up with something new. Let's find sort of a new challenge. Let's, uh, let's uh, find a way to turn this defeat, the lessons from this defeat, into something more practical. Mm. Love it. I mean, I think in your book, you, you, I think it was, was it John Henry? Yeah. Right? yeah right. The course. example, right? right? The yeah. famous example. Right. He so died. John Henry yes, of chess. That's what you won. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I lost, <laughs> but that's right. But, <laughs> but, he but won, the, but he lost. But the motivation <laughs> wasn't competition. It was, right. it, it was advancing society and creativity. Yes. And so that's, I love it. Uh, the other thing, I just a quick aside, you, you mentioned con, you know, uh, uh, performing under pressure. I think it was in the 1980s, it might have been the opening of your book. You talked about playing multiple yeah, yeah. computers. Yeah, it's, and, it's 1985, and, yes. In 1985, and you were winning all, the, all of them. There was one close match, but the computer's name was Kasparov. Yeah, they were, and you yeah. said, I got to beat this one because <laughs> I'll be able to think that it's rigged or I'm yes. getting paid to, yes. to do this. So well done. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, it's, 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 a, it's a, yeah, it's, uh, mm, I, I always, always mention this, this uh, simultaneous exhibition I played in 1985 against 32 chess playing uh, computers. Um, because it, 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 it's not it, the importance of, important of this event was not just I won all the games, but nobody was surprised. And I have to I have to admit that the fact that I could win all the games, uh, all the games against these thirty-two uh, chess playing computers, they're, just, they're only chess playing machines, so that's they they did nothing else. Um, uh, um, probably um, boosted my confidence that I would never I would never be defeated by even by more powerful machines. Right. Well, I'd love it. That's why I asked the question. Uh, uh, how, how far can we take mm -hmm. machines? You know, we don't know, like you said. Look, it's the, we, uh, why should we bother? I mean, it's just, it's the, right. I, I see so many, so many new challenges that we will be able to take and challenges we abandoned, like space exploration or deep ocean exploration because they were too risky, because we couldn't actually calculate all the odds. Great, now we have AI. There's, let's, you know, it's all about sort of is, uh, increasing um, our, um, um, increasing risk, right. because we could actually uh, measure it against this uh, phenomenal power of, of AI that will help us to find the right path. So I want to follow up on some other commentary. Uh, Brynjolfsson and McAfee basically put forth the, put the premise, look, machines have always replaced humans, but this is the first time in history they've replaced humans in terms of cognitive tasks. Okay. And they've also posited that, look, there's no question that it's affecting jobs. But they put forth a prescription, which I think as an optimist you would agree with, that it's about finding new opportunities. It's about bringing creativity in, complementing the machines, and creating new value. Um, as an optimist, I presume you would agree with that. Yes? Absolutely. Um, as, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always saying jobs do not disappear. They evolve. Mm. Because it's, 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 uh, in, um, it's inevitable... Um, part of the, uh, of the technological progress. Mm -hmm. We come up with new ideas and the, every disruptive technology destroys some industries but creates new jobs. So basically we just, we just have, we see jobs shifting from one industry to another, like from agriculture to manufacturer, from manufacturer to uh, other se sectors, you know, cognitive tasks. But now it's, there will be something else. So 
I think the, the, the market will, will, will change, the job market will change quite dramatically. And again, I believe that we will have to look for riskier jobs. We'll have to start doing things that we abandoned 30, 40 years ago because we thought they were too risky. And so, yeah. it's, and, and it's back to the book you were talking about, um, uh, what deep thinking, you know, where machine learning ends and human, or machine intelligence ends and, and human intelligence begins. It, you, you talked about courage, yeah, right? And yes. about, and we need fail safes in place, but you also need that human element of courage, like you said, to accept risk and take risk. Yes, but it's now, now it probably will be easier, but also, also, um, as I said, the machines will, will force a lot of talent actually to move into other areas that, uh, that were not as attractive because there were other opportunities. So this is, there's so many what I call rot cognitive tasks that are just still financial attractive. I hope AI will close many loops and we'll see talent moving into areas where just we just have to uh, open new horizons. Uh, I think it's very important just to remember that it's, just, it's the technological progress, especially when you're talking about disruptive technology, it's more about unintended consequences. The, uh, our uh, flight to the moon was just, uh, it's psychologically it's important, uh, the space race, the Cold War, but, but it was about also uh, GPS, about ARPANET. I mean, so many side effects that in the 60s were not yet appreciated, but eventually created the world where we live now. So I don't know the consequences of us flying to Mars. Maybe it's something will happen in one of the asteroids. We'll just, I don't know, whether we'll find sort of, uh, uh, sort of a new substance that will replace uh, uh, fossil fuel. What I know, it will happen. Because it's just, it's, we, 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 when you look at the human history, it's this, this, the, all this great exploration. Uh, they ended up with unintended consequences as the, as the main result, not what was the originally planned as the, as, as the, as the number one goal. We, we've been talking about where innovation comes from uh, today. It's a combination of, I, I put out there, a combination of data plus uh, being able to apply artificial intelligence, and of course there's cloud economics a, 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 as well. Um, essentially, uh, well, is that reasonable? And I, and I bring it, I think about something that you've said, I believe, in the past, is that you didn't have the advantage of, of seeing Deep Blue's moves, but it had the advantage of studying your moves. You didn't have all the data. It had the data. So how does data fit in to the, no, to the future? Data, data is vital. Data is, data is, is fuel. Uh, and, uh, and that's what I think we need. We need to find so the most effective ways of collaboration between humans and machines. Machine can mine the data. Uh, I mean, for instance, IBM Watson, you know, just is, was, 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 the, was an, it's, it's a breakthrough in, in uh, uh, instantly mining data and human language. Um, and now we could see just even just more, uh, more effective uh, tools to, to, to uh, help us to mine the data. But at the end of the day, it's why are we doing that? So this is, it's, it's, what's the purpose? So what, what does matter to us? So why do we want to mine these data? Why do we want to do it here and not there? So it's the, it, it seems just, you know, it's, uh, 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 at first sight that the human responsibilities are shrinking. I think exactly the opposite. We just don't have to move too much, but just, you know, by, by the, the, the tiny, a tiny shift, uh, just, you know, a percentage of an angle, of, 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 um, of a degree of an angle could actually make mm -hmm. huge difference, mm -hmm. yes, when, when this, okay, it's, if it's no weapon, it's a bullet, reaches, reaches the target. So the same with, with, with AI. More power actually offers opportunities to start just, you know, just making tiny uh, adjustments that could have massive consequences. Open up a big aperture. Yes. That's, that's why you like augmented yeah, I, I think it's artificial, artificial is, is sci-fi. What's I mean, artificial just, about it? I don't know. But exactly, understand. but it's, it's, it's artificial, it's, 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 it's easy, easy sell because it's, it's sci-fi, mm -hmm. but <laughs> augmented is just what it is mm -hmm. because it's, it's um, in our intelligent machines, they're making us smarter. Right. Mm -hmm. So same way as the technology in the past made us stronger and, and, and faster. It's not artificial horsepower. Right, right. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, it's created from something. <laughs> exactly, but right? it's just, it's created from something. And, and even if they could just, you know, these machines can, can adjust their own code, you know, fine. So it's, it, they still will be, will be confined within the parameters of the tasks. Mm. That is, so it's this, that's, they cannot go beyond that. Because again, this is, this, this, they can only answer questions. That's this, they can only give you answers. So that's this, this, 
we provide the questions. So it's very important to, re to recognize that is this the, 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 we will be in the leading role. That's why I, I use the term shepherds. Mm. How do you spend your time these days? You're obviously writing, you're speaking. Writing, speaking, uh, um, traveling around the world. So because I uh, just I have to show up at many many, many conferences, and it's the AI now is a very hot topic. Um, I'm also, as you mentioned, I'm the chairman of Human Rights Foundation, uh, and uh, um, you know I just have my responsibilities to um, um, help uh, people who are just uh, dissidents around the world. So. Um, who are fighting uh, uh, for their principles and for freedom. Uh, our organization runs the largest dissident gathering in the world. It's the um, Oslo Freedom Forum. We have the 10th anniversary, 10th uh, event uh, this May. Thank it you. has been a pleasure. Gary Kasparov, great to meet you. Live on theCUBE, back with more from New York City right after this.